Diyarbek Bismar, Nifsonlu Bismar, Russia and Ukraine. Remark News is here with new developments. Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Resnikov announced that the Challenger 2 tanks supplied by the UK were brought to his country. In addition, it was announced that the Russian military carried out 24 air strikes and 12 missile strikes in Ukraine in the last day. Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Resnikov made a statement on a social media account regarding the tanks provided to Ukraine within the framework of the Western Tank Coalition. Challenger 2 tanks supplied by the UK have just arrived in our country, Raznikov said, and thanked the UK administration and people for the tanks. Minister Raznikov stated that the tanks are being test-driven and that they will soon start their combat duties. On the other hand, in a statement made by the Ukrainian general staff, it was noted that the Russian army organized 24 air and 12 missile attacks in the last day. Yesterday, civilians were killed and injured as a result of a missile attack on the infrastructure of the city of Slovyansk in the Donetsk region. Statement was included. In the statement, it was reported that a civilian facility was damaged in the airstrike carried out by the Russians in the city of Berislav in the Kherson region. It was stated that Russia attacked with unmanned aerial vehicles at night, 14 of which were shot down by Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian Ground Forces Commander Alexander Serbsky, in a statement on a social media account, assessed the situation on the front line, stating that the Russians are trying to concentrate their main efforts in the direction of Bakhmut, Serbsky said. They continue their attempts to cordon off and seize the city. Thanks to the heroism and professionalism of our army, its skillful and coordinated actions, maneuver and effective use of weapons, we are holding Bakhmut despite various forecasts, Serbsky said. Noting that their main goal is to exhaust the superior power and inflict heavy losses of the Russian army, Sirsky said, This will ensure the liberation of Ukrainian territory and create the necessary conditions to accelerate our victory. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte said his country was open to sending fighter jets to Ukraine. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte held a joint press conference with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Rotterdam. Prime Minister Rutte said, in the Netherlands, we are consulting intensively with our partners without ruling anything out, but at the moment no decision has been taken regarding our training of pilots for the use of fighter jets. Nothing has been decided here yet. Ukraine requested F-16 fighter jets from the Netherlands last month. French Defense Minister Sebastien Lecourneau announced that they will double the number of 155mm howitzer shells sent to Ukraine. In an interview with the French newspaper Le Figaro, Le Corne made statements regarding his country's military equipment support to Ukraine, pointing out that France will send the necessary field equipment for an offensive against Ukraine. Le Corne said that they will double the number of 155mm howitzer shells to be sent to Ukraine starting from the end of this month, and increase it to 2,000 per month. The French defense minister also said that Paris would soon send the SAMPT air defense system to Ukraine as promised. Le Corne said he was working with French Prime Minister Elisabeth Borne on the renewal of the support fund for Ukraine, of which 200 million euros had already been allocated. Members of a recently formed assault unit in Russia reported that their commanders assigned soldiers to prevent them from retreating and that they were told they would be killed if they retreated in the face of the huge losses they suffered in eastern Ukraine. More than 20 soldiers in military uniforms from the storm unit of the defense ministry appeared in front of the camera. In the video, they shot for Russian President Vladimir Putin to see. In the video, which was first shared on Telegram channels, soldiers Alexander Gordon said, We sat in the open under mortar and artillery fire for 14 days, adding, We suffered huge losses. 34 people were injured and 22 people died. Another soldier claimed that there were 161 soldiers in the unit at the beginning of the operation. Goring said that the soldiers of the unit fighting in Ukraine decided to return to the Russian army center, but the commanders prevented them from doing so. They placed barrier soldiers behind us and did not allow us to leave our positions. They threatened to destroy us one by one and as a unit. They want to execute us because we have witnessed their incompetent and criminal leadership. A soldier who identified himself in the video as Sergei Moldanov said, Our commanders are a criminal organization. 
There is no other way to characterize it. Britain's The Guardian newspaper identified eight people in the video, but was able to reach three of them. They admitted to being members of the Storm Unit and confirmed the video. The Storm Unit was tasked in January to take part in Moscow's winter offensive and penetrate strong points in Ukraine's defenses. According to a report by analysts at the Institute for the Study of War, neither Ukraine nor the West convinced Putin that he should consider any compromise. Instead, Putin is focused on achieving his original military goals through a protracted conflict, in which he can win by imposing his will on Ukraine or by breaking Ukraine's will after the West stops supporting Kyiv. Experts believe that the Russian army's continued offensive around Bakhmut, Avdivka, and along the front line in Luhansk and the western part of the Donetsk Oblasts show that Putin is still trying to win. At the same time, the Russian leader is afraid to do anything but does not put forward any conditions for negotiations other than a Russia victory. In this context, analysts have concluded that Ukraine has three options for action. Stop the fighting, which would lead to a catastrophic defeat. Continue to conduct limited military action just to hold the current front line, but this will encourage Putin to attack further. Launch a counter-offensive to convince Putin to sit at the negotiating table or create military realities in which Kyiv and its Western allies can effectively freeze the war. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Agri Agriculture Henryk Kowalczyk was attending an agricultural forum in Poland's Podkarpacia region when his speech was interrupted by a protest by farmers. The farmers stormed the event, which began on Wednesday, chanting slogans surrounded the minister on stage and threw eggs. Traders, you sold us out to Ukraine, the farmers shouted as they followed the minister, who was escorted out of the hall with the help of security guards. There was a scuffle between police and protesters. The farmers complained that the uncontrolled opening of the border with Ukraine has led to an influx of Ukrainian grain, undermining their income. We made the decision to open the borders together. Kowalczyk responded to the opposition, which had proposed a motion to impeach him. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky received IAEA President Rafael Mariana Grossi, who came to the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia for talks. Zelensky said on a social media account that he and Grossi discussed the consequences of the Russian missile attacks on the Dnipro hydroelectric power plant and the measures taken to protect the plant from possible new attacks, stating that they discussed the situation at the Zaporizhia and PP in detail. Zelensky said, any attempt to restore nuclear security is doomed to failure if Russian troops and personnel do not immediately withdraw from the Zaporizhia NPP and the regions near it. Zelensky also thanked Grossi for his support in ensuring the security of nuclear energy facilities in Ukraine, noting that he played an important role in ensuring the energy security in his country.